Hello, we're on our second video in our adventure to figure out how Cloudflare workers work. Now, if you seen our last video, we were able to set up the CLI and we got a very, very simple worker function running on Cloudflare. So in this video, I want to go into a more practical example. So what are we trying to do? In this video, let's do a example app where we query an API and we get the result of the API back into the user uh, to the user's browser and then in the back end we will send the payload to a discord hook so the message can be sent to our discord channel so how does this how does that work well first let's look at this example we want to do a uh, request to so the 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 external API I want to do is Coinbase. So I want to hit the Coinbase API for the price of Bitcoin. So how do you do that in the function? Well, this is just like JavaScript. You pretty much do it the same way. So let's initialize a variable called const Bitcoin API. So this will be the endpoint for Bitcoin API from Coinbase. That's public. We can easily get that um, by doing a search, but I already got the URL. So this is a public API. You don't need any authentication. You can just hit the endpoint and you can get price information about Bitcoin. So that's easier. That's easy. So now how do we get the price of Bitcoin? Well, our goal for this, uh, our first goal is to get the price of Bitcoin to render on this page when we hit the URL, when we hit the worker. So just like any Node.js function, you want to do a request to that endpoint. So the way that Cloudflare does it is that you need to set a response. So all of this, remember, this is async function, so everything needs to be asynchronous. Let's call the fetch API. So the fetch API, the first URL will be the endpoint of the API. So it will be Bitcoin API. And now the second variable will be, we'll call this options for now. So this is like where you want to send the, the headers and user agents and all that stuff. So I know that for, for us, we'll need to set this variable. So let's do const options equals. So in here, in options, I would like to set a couple of headers because I know for the Coinbase API, they require you to set a user agent header. So we're just going to call it foo 1.0. And then we need to set the content type. So it'll be content type. Let's call this application JSON. And then let's set the char set to UTF-8. So now you have the header information set up and we can pass that to this fetch function. So just like any fetch, uh, Node.js fetch API, you need, so if you expect a JSON response from the end server, you should parse the JSON first. So let's call this Bitcoin data JSON. So let's call this await response. So don't worry about the error handling for now. Let's just assume that it will work for the sake of this example. And now I want to return the data back to the user. So one way you can do that is you can stringify the data. So let's say const coin data string equals JSON dot stringify. So we want to stringify this Bitcoin data JSON. So once you have that, you can just pass the response back, right? So if you do that, and then for the header, we're just gonna send the same header option here. So here. So if we do this, I press save. Remember, I have uh, the development mode on. So if I do Wrangler dev, it will detect my changes automatically. And then when you go there, oh, it seems like I may need to restart it for some reason. Uh, don't worry about this backtrace one. This is for like internal logging. So if I do Wrangler dev, so listening, it's making changes. As you can see, if I refresh, I get this data here. So this is from the Coinbase API for Bitcoin price. So it's currently trading at $63,000. Crazy, I know. But this is the, the data from Coinbase. So we, we were just able to proxy the, the results from this API call into 
our worker function. So imagine you, you publish this worker function to the web somewhere. So whoever hit this thing will just invoke this whole thing and you get a response back. I, I think this is amazing. I don't need to set up any server on the back end, like anything. I don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. I just start writing my logic and focus on my logic and everything just works. So now we accomplish our first goal, which is getting the price and display it to the user. Now our second goal is to let's write a function to send the data to Discord. How's that? Like we want to send a message to Discord via a payload. So um, I know that we we want to send a payload to Discord. So if I go to the Discord first and get a webhook URL, since I know how this works, let's say I want to send data to this. So this is from me testing earlier, but let's say I want to send data to this room called MISC. I can go to edit channel, integrations, and webhooks. Since I already made a hook before, I'm just going to copy the hook URL and keep it handy. So let's keep it here for now. So uh, Discord for um, pay, sorry, sending data to Discord via a webhook is extremely easy. All we have to do is send a post request to the endpoint and everything should just work. So let's call this function send Discord message. And we'll take the message parameter. So in here, we'll do the exact same thing as we did before. We're just going to use the fetch function to call that URL up there, the Discord URL. So let's copy that. So that's the first parameter. Now the second parameter will be options. So options equals. So now this time we have to do something different. We need a couple of extra parameters. So first we need to make sure that the method is post. And then we need to set a couple of headers, actually just one header. It'll be content type. And then it needs to be application JSON. And that's all we need. Now for the body header, we well not the header, but the payload of the body, we need to JSON stringify it. So what do we stringify? Well, we got a couple of things we can send to Discord to make it recognize us. So let's do the username field. Pentacode. I'm just going to call my, my message from Pentacode. Uh, avatar URL. We don't have any, any avatar, so we're just going to set it to empty right now. Now the content is the most important part. This is the message you want to send to Discord, and it will be displayed. Um, for everything else, let's set an allowed mentions. So this is useful for uh, if you want to enable specific uh, act here or at everyone for people. Um, let's just do users roles. Don't worry about it. This is not important to the point of this tutorial. So just leave that for now. Okay. So we should be good to go. Now, if we pass these options as a second parameter. So this will call the fetch function, right? So this whole thing will just return this fetch function. And make a message, send a message to Discord via the Webhooks API, and we pass in our message. So let's build our message first. So what do we want to call it? Um, Bitcoin price is currently uh, I had to string interpolate like this to make it easier to concatenate our variables. So we want to say BTC data JSON dot price because that's a value we want to do, right? The price here. So now we just call await send Discord message message. So as you know, we are not handling any errors, but in the real world, you should handle these errors. But for now, no errors are handled. So if we do everything correctly, let me just uh, clear this thing. Okay. If we do everything correctly and we refresh this page, it should tell us this response and it will send a message to our Discord at the same time. So do this. There you go. So I still don't know why it's sending it twice, but 
this is coming from our app. So there you go. This is one practical example of how you can use Cloudflare workers to do this kind of work. Now this is not over. So if you go to the dashboard of your um, of your app, you can actually set up triggers for it. So you can set up cron jobs for your worker. So if you have a worker, you can set up a cron job and it will run this script like at an interval. So let's publish this, right? If you do Wrangler publish, this will be published to the web. So anyone who hits the endpoint will send a message to my Discord. <laughs> so please don't visit it too much, but it'll be pretty fun. Um, always come come into our Discord, by the way, and we are always there to happy to talk about web dev. So as you can see, we got another message and it's working. And this is on a public URL. And that should be it for this example. It's very handy. I, I hope this is practical for you guys because and you, you can discover the power of, uh, of Cloudflare Worker for you to create applications insanely fast and have this application run anywhere from the world at the closest to the user's location. And you can scale this effortlessly. Let's say this URL gets hit like a million times a day. No problem. Like Cloudflare will handle all the scaling for you. So I hope you guys find this video useful. Stay tuned for part three. We'll go into more advanced concepts. See you guys next time.